Boy, do I have a lot of catching up to do. I probably spent more time at the movies this week than I have any other time so far. I'm not entirely sure how that happened, it just sort of did. However, when you think about it, it does seem kind of fitting to begin the new year with a big bang, so why not? Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the best kickoff of the new year with a triple threat movie review, starting with... This kind of movie shouldn't work, but it does. That's not to say it's a masterpiece, no, 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 far from it, but it is a very admirable piece of work. It's a dramatization of the people who discovered that the housing market was going to crash. That's basically it. There's a lot of banking terms, a lot of stock option turns, and a lot of exposition. But what makes this film so good at it is that it's aware that the stuff it's talking about is boring and kind of hard to admit. So it makes up for it by being very visual in its presentation. For example, at one point in the movie, it makes a Family Guy style cutaway to Margot Robbie in a bubble bath explaining banking terms. Yeah. Like I said, the film is admirable, but it's not completely well done in my opinion. It has great acting, great jokes, great writing, and mostly great visuals. I say mostly because one of the other things that the film tries to do in order to compensate for how mostly boring its subject matter would be is it decides to do that zoomed in shaky cam camera technique that creates artificial movement and just gets annoying after a while. It is a technique that works when done right, but in my opinion, it was not done right here. Mostly because they do that throughout the entire movie. It's also guilty of fast paced editing that just drives me crazy. And because of that, I can't really give the movie a complete passing grade. I give the movie extra points to being ambitious and important because we all definitely need to see this movie. And not just for the obvious reasons. That really was very funny. Okay. Done with that movie. Moving on! I once stated that Jennifer Lawrence is one of the greatest actresses of our generation, and I stand by that assessment. Because once again, she was the only part of this particular movie that made it worthwhile. Story-wise, it's about a young woman who is dealing with a lot of financial and family issues, who invents the Miracle Mop and is trying to sell it. Along the way, she's dealing with mean business people, mean old friends, and mean family members. Now, needless to say, it is a very good story, and it is definitely one that was worth telling. It's just a shame that this one was told by David O. Russell. Not that I have anything against the guy as a filmmaker, I do find him to be very talented and very good. I mean, just look at these movies. But as of late, he seems to have been trying to one-up himself a little too much. For one thing, Joy has a lot of stuff that has no relevance to the plot whatsoever, and it really suffers from just being way too long. It's the kind of movie that you should definitely see, but you only need to see it once. Not too bad, but could have been a lot better. And Jennifer Lawrence is always worth watching. Okay, done with that one. Moving on to last, but most certainly not least. If this does not get nominated for any Oscars this year, I am going to be angry. Beautiful acting, great writing, gorgeous cinematography, and occasionally lame direction. The story follows two Danish painters, one in particular who discovers he's actually transgender, in 1920s Denmark. Yeah, in case you don't know, it was very hard to be more open about your sexuality back then. I mean, it still is now, and it really shouldn't be in my opinion, but back then it was a lot harder. Everyone's acting in this is absolutely superb. Eddie Redmayne especially definitely deserves another Oscar nod. And if Alicia Vikander doesn't get nominated for Ex Machina, she absolutely has to get nominated for this. And as I said before, the direction is partially lame in my opinion. The film was directed by Tom Hooper, who previously handled a film that I really like, and a film that I really didn't like. The thing about Tom Hooper is that he is an actor's director. He knows how to handle actors and how to get great performances out of any actor very well. The problem is he doesn't really know how to direct the camera. He understands back and forth camera placement, but he doesn't really understand when to properly use wide shots. There are a couple of shots in the film that don't really make a whole lot of sense in my opinion, but fortunately they don't detract from the quality of the movie. Very relevant, very important, and very good for the most part. Definitely go see it. Whew! Wow. I think that was a good kickstart for the year, don't you? I certainly hope so. Ladies and gentlemen, I am the Norm. Thanks for watching.